it is day the, nearing the end of day day what six six or six or whatever of the trip uh it, we're in whitehall bay we just finished dinner and i was thinking of what are some thoughts on uh the trip this year and what we would change what we need to work on or fix or whatever <laughs> So, um, one of the things first, like the timing of this, uh, wasn't the best timing for, uh, the, uh, for a trip because we ended up leaving after 4th of July and usually July in the Bay, the weather is kind of sketchy. You don't have a lot of good wind and good sailing days. In fact, we only had one really good sailing day. I think today wasn't too bad, but we were kind of motoring off and on. But uh, really only one good day, the day we went from Rock Hall to Magathy River, had good wind that day. So every other day we spent, you know, more time than I like motoring just because there was no wind. Normally we like to try to do this in June if we can. Like we get out of school sometimes June, mid-June. Of course we had planned on leaving June 19th or something like that. Of course right at the last minute my daughter... Uh, bought a condo so we spent two weeks helping her get that thing painted and floors changed and that sort of thing so that kind of set us back two weeks but we went ahead and left end of, or after fourth of july uh so we dealt with the weather you know the best we could other things that uh we've thought about one thing that i noticed today and we have a water heater on the boat and i thought based on the, the water heater's placement and the plumbing and such that goes to it is that it's only heated by when you're plugged into shore power. But I think it's possible that it is plumbed to the engine because we have not run out of hot water on this trip. Uh, even just now, I just finished up uh, doing the dishes from dinner and uh, there's hot water in there. It's got to be plumbed through the engine, which I didn't realize. So uh, I know our last boat was like that, but I didn't think this one was for some reason. Some reason, I, I, I think it was because... I, oh, you know what it was? I think what it was was before the hot water, the water tank wasn't hooked up, the water heater. And then I hooked, looked at it and found that it, someone, someone had unhooked the, the hoses and bypassed the water heater. So I hooked it back up. And I think they did that as part of winterization or something. And I hooked it back up and turned the power on and it worked. Uh, I didn't realize, though, that it was plumbed to the engine to stay hot because that's been nice having hot water for dishes and, sh and showers and stuff on the trip. Uh, the holding tank on this boat is is woefully uh, undersized because we're at oh, two thirds right now, solid two thirds approaching full, uh, and on you know a six seven day trip, we weren't able to pump out at any point during the during the trip. We tried in Rock Hall, but we couldn't get in because the marina was closed. We tried in Magathy River, but we couldn't do it because the theirs didn't work. So that was one thing that kind of kind of was a pain in the butt. As far as water supply goes, we got plenty of fresh water. I filled it up before we left. We're at about half a tank of fresh water. Fuel has been no problem. I don't think we've dropped below. We haven't gone below three quarters of a tank. I think we're, we filled that up before we left. And I think we were, right now we're about somewhere between three quarters and full. So uh, fuel and water are great, but the holding tank thing is ridiculous compared to the other two. Uh, what else? Other notes oh some other things that we were talking about uh working on for maybe next season is uh we don't have an inverter on the boat so we can't use uh 120 volt appliances or or like a laptop charger and stuff so earlier this week i had to go uh we had to go into a, a coffee shop so i could charge my laptop so i could do some work and um if we had a, a, a an inverter then we could plug into that our last boat had one so we didn't have that problem, but this one doesn't have one. So I uh, like to get an inverter. The other thing that we have is there's a mix of this boat is pre LED. So someone has replaced the, the these lights here with LED lights. So they're bulbs in, in a regular and older incandescent incandescent fixture. Uh, in other there's two up in the V berth up front. There are two lights like reading lights, one on each side of the V berth uh, up on the inside there. 
and they're actually halogen lights, which they get hot and uh, they, you know, I, maybe they're not as, they don't consume as much energy as an incandescent, but uh, I like to replace those with LEDs. And I was thinking the other thing that um, we wanted up there was a USB charger or a, you know, 12 volt charger so we could plug in phones to charge up in the V-Birth. And uh, they actually make fixtures for RVs and boats that are a reading light with a USB charging port on it. So we're going to get a pair of those, like 30 bucks on Amazon. We'll get a pair of those and swap those out. It'll get rid of the halogen lights and it will uh, give us a, a charging option in the V-Birth. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Any other things you can think of? Nope. Other than that, pretty good trip overall. Other than the motoring, the motoring drives me crazy. I noticed one uh, with the motoring, two things that ha have come up. One is I've got a diesel leak somewhere. It's very small, the, just enough that I'm getting some diesel to accumulate in the bilge, uh, and actually in the engine bilge, which is separate from the the uh, main bilge. But uh, some diesel is catching in there. I can't figure out where it's coming from. I thought I had it figured out, but I put a piece of paper towel around where I thought it was, and that didn't get didn't get wet. So uh, I got to figure out where that diesel leak's coming from. Other thing I noticed is uh, I believe there's a, a rear main seal on the transmission, which I think is bad because I that is spraying oil. Not a ton, but just a little bit of oil. I don't think that's a, that big of a problem. I think there's a the way it works, there's something that sits on, on the end of that um, that is pressed that, or that you tighten some bolts and it squeezes the seal on. So I think it's just a matter of taking that off, pulling the seal off, putting the seal back in, and then retightening it. But that means you gotta take off the shaft, you gotta unhook the shaft from the from the transmission, uh, which is a procedure. So uh, that might have to happen when we haul out. We're gonna try to haul out here in a couple weeks, probably in August, so we can have the bottom painted. So that'll give me time to mess with that transmission issue and get the bottom painted. As far as like, uh, that's a, probably a fix you could also do in the water, but this you you because you can slide the shaft back a little bit. But this has a dripless shaft seal, so there's not a lot of space to slide it back uh, any further uh, because that shaft seal is compressed a certain amount, and I'm not sure how much how much is left to compress that the bellows on that. So uh, there's probably maybe enough room to get a seal in there. I don't know. Other than that, the engines run run fine. Uh, other than that, no other big engine issues yet. Cross fingers because we go back tomorrow. Uh, as far as this video goes, I did so. I bought some extra, a couple of extra things for the trip, uh, for actually filming the video. I was doing this entirely on my GoPro, and uh, I changed to doing it on my cell phone. So all this is being recorded on my cell phone. I have some GoPro video that I've done just to kind of stick the, because I can stick that on the boat in different places. So there's still some Go GoPro video here, but what I did uh, for what I bought, I bought three things. One of them is, uh, the, I can't show it to you because it's right on the phone right now, is a body glove waterproof case. And uh, the, it makes the entire thing waterproof. So all the ports are covered and everything, the screen's covered. And uh, which is nice because I you know, didn't want to get my phone wet and that sort of thing. The problem with it is the charger port is a little bit enclosed. And I bought another thing. I bought a wireless microphone so or a USB microphone. So you can clip one piece here and you plug the other piece into your USB port on the, on the phone. And you can't plug that in with this case on. You have to take the case off. So I just decided not to use the microphone. I think I used it in one video early on. But I'll ha I have that, which I may try to use in the future. The Probably the best thing, though, I'll, that I got, and I'll go ahead and take it this off right now. Oops, there we go. Uh, yikes. Probably the best thing that I bought is this uh, thing here. So this is a Joby or a tripod or gorilla pod or something like that, they call them. But it, it's like a tripod, and these things bend around, and so you can wrap it around things, or whatever. So it's a nice tripod. I've been mostly using it as kind of a selfie stick, and just holding on to it like this. But this thing here at the, the top, this has probably been even better. Is this is the clamp for the phone? So what I had on, before using my phone was a sketchy little thing that I got on this little tripod that I got for free, and it barely held the phone, and sometimes the phone would pop out. This thing actually is spring loaded. 
So, so your phone goes in there and it's like spring loaded like that. And then once it gets set to the right spot where you want it, you push this thing on the back here and it snaps in and then it's locked. It can't move. So it holds the phone really well. It's big. It's kind of, it's rugged, durable, and it has two different places to mount it. You can mount it right there at the base, or it has another place over here where you could screw just a traditional like a camera tripod mount thing on there. And that's basically what this is, a traditional camera tripod mount that screws in there. But this tripod, the Joby Gorillapod thing or whatever it's called, uh, has been great. So that's worked out well. The case, the, the body glove case, pretty good because it is waterproof, but I, have, I you know, haven't got my phone wet. But uh, I wish I could have used the microphone more just because, you know, uh, I have it. But I'll have to do it without the case on, so with my regular case. And, of course, I didn't bring my regular case with me because I thought, ah, I don't need it. I'm using my, my new case. So, uh, but those three things, uh, or at least those, these, this thing has, uh, been, has helped, I think on the video. So another thing that, uh, we are thinking about is of course we need more solar panels. So right now, as far as our power consumption goes, our biggest consumer is the refrigerator. And, uh, we just have that 100 watt panel and it's not, it's definitely not enough to keep up with the refrigerator. We've been running the engine, you know, a lot, so that's kind of helped, but even still, uh, the l last year I had to turn the, the refrigerator off a lot, you know, off and on, you know, just because, uh, it, what, what we weren't, um, or because it was draining the batteries. But, uh, this time I haven't had to turn it off as much, especially on the, the heavy engine days. Uh, so we'll have definitely next year have to look at getting a couple more panels, I think probably sitting on top the on the Bimini. So I'm kind of debating whether that's a flexible panel, uh, that sits up there or a hard panel that gets mounted. So uh, there are pluses and minuses to both of those. Uh, another thing that we had, uh, that we did this trip is we bought a couple pans and I, I'll say that actually my wife took care of all the pan thing, but uh, we bought a couple of pans and uh, just for cooking because we, we had on here some small pans that were hard to cook anything substantial in them. So we got these two pans that ended up being almost comically, <laughs> comically large, uh, and there's no place to put them on the boat. Uh, so I'll show you, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the first pan is this one. This one actually is the better of the, of the set. This one here has like a built-in, uh, colander and there's a lid on it and there's a, I think the lid, the, or the, it also has a steamer that goes in there and then there's a lid that goes on top of that. So it's like four parts. Uh, and it's fairly bit, it's fairly substantial. I mean, you can see in the, you know, compared to the rest of the galley, it's pretty big, but there's no place we can kind of put it. We can actually, I think it will fit in the storage that's underneath the dishes that are drying right now, which I'm going to have to move those to show you the other pan down below here, right in this space right here. That's where that's kind of like pan storage. And, um, I just saw like today on the island packet facebook page somebody took this piece here and they basically cut down here down along this edge here and then up here and they put a piano hinge across the bottom and they put a cup a latch on this corner and a latch on this corner so the whole thing fold folds down which gives you room to actually put the pan in there because that's the problem with the big pan i'll show you in a second is that we can't even fit it through this it's like bigger than this opening right here to get in and this opening here is like nothing so uh we definitely can't get the big this pan in there and then this big comically large pan the big comically large pan it's a very good pan though. it's a very good pan but it's very large it didn't look that large on the, on the bottom. it's huge um so like if it, it does it actually fits on the burn you know on a, on like one and a half burners on here it's nice that it's so deep because then you can you can cook a lot in it, but the actual circumference here of the thing is huge. Um, and apparently, it was a measurement measurement error. It didn't look that big on Amazon. Uh, so right now, uh, this thing will not fit down here. Oh wait, actually, holy smokes, it did. It just fit in there. <laughs> so earlier, you know what? I must have had the lid on it when it didn't go in there before. <laughs> but it actually does fit in there. Scratch that. Never mind. That does fit. I don't have to put that you thing in there. The but I can still do it to get the big one in there. But right now, we got that. Uh, it's kind of sitting in there. That's that's hilarious. <laughs> it, 
I could have swore I tried to fit that thing in there and it wouldn't fit. Maybe I'm maybe I was thinking about this big one. That definitely won't fit. You have parts of that big one underneath. Yeah, there's part. There are parts down there to the the big one. Uh, yeah, actually, ha or no, that's yeah, that's yeah, a, for that's, this. Yeah. So that's the li there's the lid down there, and then there's the um, the steamer for that big thing is in there. So, um, but this thing, it's huge. It has a huge lid in it on it too. How did I not be? How did I not get that thing on there? I turned it in like I could have swore I had it like this, and then I put it in there like that. Oh, that's it right there. It doesn't it doesn't go with the lid. Even just that tiny bit of lid upside down, and it still doesn't fit. So that's what my problem was, um, is I had the lid like this. But it will fit in there if you take the lid off, I guess. Um, but yeah, so we had that one, which actually worked out well for cooking this. Um, we cooked one thing in there, a pasta dish, and it turned out pretty good. So that's the, the pan dilemma, the pan problem, which I may have just fixed, believe it or not. Well, you can't put the lid on, though. You can't put the lid on, but you can put them in separate, maybe, and do it. But that's the pan, the pan issue. All right, it is day seven, morning of, and we are still here at Anchor at Whitehall Bay. The winds have shifted, and uh, last night they were coming in from, like, the south southeast now they're coming in more from the northwest so it's gonna make it uh pretty easy to get out of here if we want to sail out of here last night when we came in i anchored under sail uh so just because the winds happened to be um in good position to do that and there was no one else here so uh, i'm gonna try to pick up the anchor today and sail out from the anchor and i think we can do that because right now we're facing off this way, directly where the wind is coming from, and we want to be headed off in that direction over there, uh, that direction over there somewhere, and uh, that's going to put us on a, about a perfect beam reach as soon as uh, we pick the anchor up. So I'm going to put, put the sails up here, and uh, or at least put the main up, and then uh, pull the anchor up, try to make a turn to port, put us on a beam reach, and we should be able to sail right out of here. So that's the plan for today. We're gonna to head back into the marina. And once we get back to the marina, we'll get everything packed up. We're gonna spend the night still tonight on the boat. Uh, so after we, or once we get back, we'll get cleaned up and everything. I'm gonna to go to Forward Brewing for a couple beers and then come back and spend the night. And then tomorrow we'll leave the marina and head back home. I think today is, how many days has this been for us on the boat? Okay, so yeah, this is our fourth straight day uh, since we haven't been off the boat. We've been uh, we didn't haven't been off the boat since uh, Saturday afternoon in uh, Rock Hall, and then uh, so now today is I believe it's like Tuesday or something. Or it's Wednesday. Sorry, it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday morning. So we haven't been off the boat in a while, and uh, it's going to take a few minutes to get our land legs back. So we did not sail. Sorry, the car is still the same way as the Yeah. Just keep just keep going. You can um, tip to the left a little bit. Well, I can also sail. Alright, so we did not sail off anchor as planned. Uh, because the wind shifted since I like did the first I, I said that I was going to. And then the wind shifted, so now they were kind of coming from where we wanted to go, sort of. I think actually now. We can probably throw the sails up uh, because the winds are coming more south now and we're kind of headed uh, a little west so uh, or southwest so or, uh, so we'll see if we can get them if we can get them up or not uh, but otherwise we're headed back to the marina
Okay, we are back at the marina, and uh, everything went smooth coming in. Once we got in, I took some, put every, got everything packed up and back where it's supposed to be most of most of the way. Took the dinghy off this morning. I took the de deflated the dinghy partially, pulled it into the cockpit and rolled it up temporarily in the cockpit. And then once I got here, I took it out of the boat, took it into the parking garage, folded it out. Put, squeezed all the air out of it and then rolled it up nice and tight. Uh, what I think might be a better option next time I do this is just bring the dinghy in inflated, take it to the dinghy dock, pull it out and deflate it there. It'd be much easier than try to deflate it on deck because it takes a lot of space up on, on deck or in the cockpit. So um, we came back, once we got back, everything sorted out. I actually got the air conditioner working and then we went and took a shower in the bathhouse uh, and uh, came back. It was still working when we got back, but then it just cut out. So I don't know what, what is wrong with the air conditioner. But before what was happening, uh, or once what I fixed, I took everything apart. I took the, the pump and all the hoses and everything. And I think the big problem was it just so much air in there. And uh, I think maybe the filter is not letting it draw enough water. So that's probably what's wrong with it. I'm gonna have to maybe find a way to replace that filter and um, try it again, try to get all the air back out of it. And because everything else worked, and uh, maybe we'll have the air conditioner working, but we hardly ever use it. So it's one of those things that, you know, you don't use it a lot. So it, um, it doesn't, it doesn't work when you need it to. So uh, what we've got planned for the rest of the day today is we're going to go over to forward brewing, which is a couple blocks away from our marina. And uh, then we'll stay the night here on the boat, pack up everything tomorrow and then head back home, ending the big trip uh, tomorrow. All right. Now we're walking to forward. So marina back that way, forward up that way. All right, last morning on the boat, last day of our trip. We spent last night at the marina, and we've got to unload all this stuff and take it home, get everything washed up. So let's unload all this stuff. So boat is packed up and uh, we're ready to get out of here soon. We're going to go to lunch over at Bread and Butter Kitchen, which is a short walking distance that way from our marina. And uh, then we're going to head home. As far as what we've got in store on the channel for the next few videos, I've got some other some projects that I want to do. I'm going to get that air conditioner fixed. Uh, a couple other little things here and there. The lights in the V-berth, I want to swap those out. Coming up in August, first week or second week of August, we're going to have the boat hauled out and painted. I'm also going to do some uh, work with the uh, try to fix the transmission rear seal leak and then also try to work on the shaft seal issues that uh, that I've had. So uh, that's coming up in the next few videos after this one, hopefully. And uh, that's all I've got, I think. And uh, I want to thank everybody who's watching for watching the video, especially if you're watching all the way to the end. And um, hopefully I'll get some good, more good videos coming out uh, in the near future. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you all later.